Okay, now, in order to use a pivot table to analyze a large range of data, um, now, just a word of warning before I start this, this is the 2008 Microsoft Excel uh, version that I'm using here. The 2013 Microsoft Excel version that you'll be using uh, is actually, I think, better uh, in terms of creating the pivot, the pivot tables and setting them up. I think it's a far better layout, so you'll find it a lot easier using 2013 Microsoft Excel. But uh, a lot of the features are very similar between 2008 and 2013. Just looks slightly different, but um, most of them are the same, so you shouldn't have any trouble uh, catching on to what I'm actually about to show you. Um, so let's make a start on the pivot table. Now, as you can see, I've got my spreadsheet here with all the data. And what I need to do is, um, and you can't see this because it's just out of screenshot, but if I go to the data menu at the top of the screen, so data, and then I go down to pivot table report. Now, in 2013, you've actually got the pivot table uh, over here in, in the gallery. So you should be able to just click on pivot table and it will open up the pivot table wizard. Okay, but in 2008, Microsoft is actually uh, here in the menu. So I'm just going to tap on pivot table report. You can see here it opens up the pivot table wizard. Now you'll get something similar for Excel 2013. Uh, they're very similar. And basically it's just a case of following uh, the details here, reading where is the data that you want to analyze, which of course is on the Excel list or database. Uh, you can also access external data sources if you want to. In other words, other files uh, on other computers if um, you've got it all connected up to uh, in a network. Uh, multiple consolidation ranges and another pivot table. So you can actually create a pivot table and then create another pivot table from the original pivot table. So that comes in handy too. Uh, but what I'm going to show you here is the basics. Okay, so that you can then use this to help you in your analysis of the data. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, allow, uh, keep this uh, radio button selected, Microsoft Excel list or database, and then we'll go next. Okay, now step two says, uh, where is the data that you want to use? and automatically it's recognized that the data is from cells A1 from product code through to G1866, which is all the way down, down the bottom of the spreadsheet there where I've got my data. Now, you're probably wondering what are these dollar signs? Now, just to let you know, because you might come across this uh, later on, the dollar signs mean fixed cell references. In other words, the cell reference A1 doesn't change. The reference cell G1866 doesn't change. So that data range remains as it is. And that's important to know. If you want to fill, for example, uh, a range of cells with a formula but you don't want the cells to move okay in other words you don't want the cell ranges to move for that range of data that you're using for a particular formula then you put these dollar signs in front of the cell reference letters and numbers and it keeps the cell ranges exactly as you've specified Okay, it doesn't let fill down functions change the cell references. And that's really important to know because um, you can get a lot of errors if you don't apply those dollar signs. Now, um, anyway, that's been done for you automatically by the program, so you don't have to worry about it. But just so you know in the future, that's what the dollar signs mean. Okay, now that's all done. So all we need to do now is go next. 
And step three of the pivot table wizard says, where do you want to put the pivot table? And it's better to put the pivot table in a new sheet within the workbook. Okay, so a new sheet uh, within the Excel file. Um, I mean, you can put it in an existing sheet, but I just prefer to put it in a new sheet. Okay, now we need to click on this layout button to design our pivot table, and that's important. So let's click on layout. You'll get a similar button in um, Excel 2013. In fact, you what you'll have is drag and drop. So you'll be able to drag uh, column headings into fields, okay? And then you'll be able to uh, set them up, finish the pivot table layout wizard, and then uh, it'll come out. And actually, actually, it's a better way of setting up the pivot table than this is. So uh, you should find the Excel 2013 way of setting up the pivot table uh, even easier to use than this. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead with layout. There we go. Layout. Uh, let's say, for example, I wanted to get the highest temperatures. Uh, so I'll put high, highest temperatures in the column area, highest temperatures in the data, and I want to have the years as, as um, in the rows. So once I've got that set up, what I can do is I can go OK. Uh, options. Um, probably want to avoid grand totals for columns. Uh, we can have grand totals for rows, but really that sort of useless for us. Um, then we'll just go OK and finish. OK, now we can see here we've got um, highest temperatures over here as rows, so that's not really useful to us. What we can do is we can actually drag this uh, over here into underneath the year section. And that will make it a lot more useful for us. And we'll just change the view to normal so we can view the spreadsheet more clearly. So, yeah, as you can see here, we've got the year, we've got the highest temperatures for that year, uh, which, have, if you remember, it was only for eight months of that year. And then from then on, we had. 12 months of the year. Okay, so that's a bit more useful to us. So, uh, the beauty of this is that um, once you've got the data laid out like this, you can actually start performing particular tasks with it. Um, you know, you can, you can actually uh, count the number of days over 30 degrees. You can actually, because you have the highest temperatures in a column, Okay, it's a lot easier to manipulate the data. All right, so let me give you an example uh, of that. Uh, let's get this up and running. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do a bit of analysis, um, some manual analysis. In fact, I'm not going to even use the pivot table, which you can use to um, add average um, data from the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some stats here, and I'm going to use them to see if I can make a graph from them. OK, so let's do that very quickly. Shouldn't take very long. Uh, let's say I wanted to take data from the years 1970 to 1990 and I wanted to um, create uh, a comparison of temperatures from uh, 1970 to 1990 and then from 1990 to 2010. 
All right, so let's uh, let's see if we can do that. And what we'll do is we'll use the uh, the count if function to do that. So let's uh, let's make a start on that. Let's put in the equal sign. Um, so count if uh, of course we've got our range, uh, which from 1970. We've got cell B1471, one, two, uh, if we go down to 1990, um, where are we, 1990, okay, so up to 1990, which will be cell B, one seven two five, which is that one there? So cell B one seven two five. Uh, then we want to put in the comma. Uh, put in our quotation mark. We want to put in temperatures that are greater than and equal to 30 degrees, close with the quotation marks, close the brackets and hit the enter key and we can see from that that we've got 107 days between 1970 um, or should I say 107 averages um, from months between 1970 and 1990, uh, which were over 107 of them that were over 30 degrees. Okay, so that's for 20 years now. What I'll now do is I will drag down and fill down that same formula, but I'm going to change. I'm going to change the cell ranges so that I can compare. Um, from 1990 until uh, 2010. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go to 1990. Okay, so from 1991, and we can do this manually. You can do it like this if you want to, uh, or you can actually type in the actual cell references, that's no problem, either way is fine. And we've got until 2009 there. So let's go back to our formula. Okay, so we've got um, 1727 to 1977. And you can see it's got the previous range there, so we want to get rid of that. So we'll just backspace that one. Okay, so we've got our ranges, and you range from 1990 to 2010, uh, B1727 to cell B1977, and we've got the condition or the criteria which is greater than or equal to 30 degrees centigrade. We hit the return key, and we've got 114. So we've got 114 days uh, greater than 30 degrees centigrade, or should I say, sorry, 114 averages for months of the year where the temperature was greater than 30 degrees. Okay, let's not get confused about that one. And um, what I can do is I can... Um, I can actually put in here some information in the cell to the left. I can say number of average uh, months greater than 30 so degrees C. And I'll just copy that and paste it 
up here. Um, I'll just make this a bit bigger so I can see it. And what I'll do is I'll um, I'll wrap the text around as well. There we go. I'll wrap text so that when we make the cells smaller again, it'll actually wrap around so you can see it. Um, and of course, that's for uh, 1970 to 1990 or 89, and that's for um, 1990 to 2009. Okay, so. Now I'll just put that in there so it looks, it reads better. Okay, so what I can now do is I can highlight these cells. Um, and I can go to charts. And I'll choose uh, a column chart. I'll use something like that. And I've just created a chart. I'll just get rid of that. I don't need it. Okay, so I've just created a chart that shows the number of average months greater than 30 degrees from 1970 to 1989, and then the number of average months greater than 30 degrees from 1990 to 2009. Okay, so I mean that's basically what you can do with your data analysis, your pivot tables, and some very basic, um, some very basic uh, formulas. Okay, you don't need to engage in some really complicated formulas to create this sort of stuff. And this is the sort of thing you can do that will help you in answering your questions for the outcome and you know provide a basis for arguing your point um, whether or whether or not um, you know swimwear should be purchased or whether a swimming pool should be purchased or not so hopefully that helps you in understanding a bit about pivot tables uh, some basic Excel spreadsheet formulas and get you on your way.